Um, so my name is Moshe Weitzman. I'm a longtime Drupal developer and a Drupal consultant. Um, I live right around here in Arlington. Um, I want to talk today about the theme developer module. Um, this is a module uh, which exists for Drupal 6, um, not for prior versions of Drupal. Um, it does work on Drupal 7. Um, and uh, this is a module that is targeted for uh, theme developers, okay, so themers. Um, it's not at all for module developers, um, or not as useful for module developers, um, not for like pure creative people, it's for themers, okay. Um, the way you get this module is you download the DVAL module for Drupal, um, which is a very popular um, package on Drupal.org. Um, you can see I have it up on the screen. Um, the URL is Drupal.org slash project slash DVAL. Um, you download that, you bring it into your site, um, and you enable uh, the module called Theme Developer on your modules page. Okay? Um, and uh, once you enable that module, um, Here's the features you get. Um, here I brought up a site that I have uh, for a client uh, running on my machine that um, has its own theme, um, its own advertisements, um, lots of views and node reference fields and um, lots of things. We're, we're, we're looking at a node detail view um, and its particular story about European genetics. Um, okay, so. Um, once you've opened up, once you've uh, enabled this module, you get a checkbox in the bottom left of your screen, um, right where my uh, mouse is moving now. And you have the option of checking it. And when you do, uh, let's start from the beginning here. I'm just going to reload the page. Okay. Check it and it will um, tell you. Click on any element to see information about the Drupal theme function or template that created it. Okay, so basically you hover over different parts of the page. Do you guys see the red border that's moving around as I move around here? You might be familiar with red borders like this from um, Firebug and other tools like that. Um, but this is just a, a pure Drupal thing. Um, so, if I want to theme the breadcrumb, I hover over the breadcrumb, I get the red line where it's supposed to be here, and I click. Okay? And what happens is that my themer information box gets populated. Um, and what it gets populated with is lots of information about the theme call that emitted the HTML where I clicked. Okay? Um, in this place, the function is called theme breadcrumb, okay? And let's say, presumably I'm clicking on this because I want to override it. Um, I want to make it my own presentation. Um, and I have the choice of creating these three function names in order to override it. Um, I could create something called genome web underscore breadcrumb, okay? My theme in this site, my active theme is called genome web. Um, and so if I put genome web underscore breadcrumb in my template.php, that's going to get used. Um, if I wanted to be a little bit less specific and have it work for many different themes, I might call it PHP template breadcrumb. And the least specific is theme breadcrumb, which is the function that core ships with. Um, the one that was actually used is theme underscore breadcrumb, okay? It's called function called. Um, and um, what, what this thing is telling me now is that uh, I have not overridden the default breadcrumb function. Um, and uh, just down here, this section is about what variables are getting passed into the function. All the variables are passed here, okay? So there's only one array that gets passed in. It's called breadcrumb. It's got two elements in it. They're both strings. And in fact, they're both links, OK? A link that you see right here and a link that you see right here. So um, the big idea with theme developer module is 
you can click on any part of your Drupal page and it will tell you which theme function or theme fit template is being used to emit that, what variables are being passed to it, and if you want to override it, what you should call your function or template in order to do so. Okay? Um, let's look at a different part of the page. Um, if I go into the main um, body of the story here and click, um, what happens is that uh, the theme or information populates with information about um, the template that created that HTML right there. The template is called node.tpl.php, okay? Um, or at least that's sort of the name of the theme book that created it. Um, the actual file that was used in order to do the theming could be a little different. In this case, here it is, sites all themes genome web. Um, that's all pretty standard stuff. Node-news.tpl.php. So theme developer knows exactly which file was used to emit this. So this can actually get confusing when you're theming a site. You don't know which file is, being, is in use for any given part of your page. Let's say another themer built that part of the page and you don't know what's happening. And you can enable this module and click anywhere you want and find out what's happening. Okay? So here it was node-news.tpl.php. And in fact, um, that's a hyperlink. You can click on it and you can start reading node-news.tpl.php. Okay? Um, and it's all um, nicely formatted for you here with colors and so forth. All right? You need some elevated permissions in order to see source code, but um, it does give you that option. Okay? Um, so you just went ahead and um, saw what the source code was. Let's get back to our um, node call. Um, if I wanted to override this, I have two options. I could implement node-news.tpl.php and node.tpl.php. Um, this one has already been overridden, okay? So um, we've already done so with this one here. Okay, preprocess functions. Um, preprocess is a new feature of Drupal 6 theming. Um, I hope you guys have dug in. Um, they're super, super useful. Um, all we're telling you in this section of Theme Developer is here's all the preprocess functions that we are that have been called for this theme book. Okay, the standard ones got called. T template preprocess is something that gets called for all of them, um, and then we get into more specific ones, namely all of the preprocess node functions that have been registered were called. So template preprocess, content preprocess, node reference preprocess, pagination. These are modules that I have enabled on the site that implement preprocess node. And so they all got called. And the last one that call, got called was GW preprocess node, which is from the GW module, which is custom code for this site. Um, so the point is here, if you get into the preprocess layer and you see your variables um, in a state where you weren't expecting them, here's exactly the functions that are um, messing with variables for this call. So you could look at each one, okay? Um, uh, just a little feature that we added here, the duration of the theme call took 134 milliseconds. Um, that's more of a performance optimization thing. Um, that's fairly long, so you might want to look into why it's taking that long. Um, Okay, go ahead, right there. Is that a theme layer or is it end-to-end -end duration? How it is calculated? This is the, just the theme hook. So this is theme node. Um, so there should not be any queries happening unless you put them in in your preprocess functions or something. It's really the duration of the theme hook. Um, and um, if you guys have worked with node.tpl.php, you know it gets past a bunch of variables. Um, and it gets past everything about the node, pretty much. So there's a nid variable, there's a type variable, there's a language variable. So the point of this section in the theme developer pop-up is, hey, here's all the variables you have to work with in this particular theme hook. Um, the way you do this without theme developer module is you do print r in your template, get defined vars, and you get to see them. Um, but hopefully this is a more convenient way to do the same thing. This certainly gives you a nice way to descend down into arrays. Um, 
uh, we used a, a CCK field on this node type, the story node type, or I guess it's called news, this node type, um, called full title. And so that, you can look at everything under full title. It's got a zero and then an array under that called value, safe, and view. Um, it's actually null right now. Um, so the point is that uh, now you just have x-ray vision into um, overriding this piece of content. Um, what you might want to call your template file, what template files is actually in use, um, which preprocess functions are in use, how long it took, what the variables are. Um, so let's just click around the page and see a little bit more. Um, this is a little page tools thing that we built, okay? Um, you can see that um, the theme function that emitted this is called theme links. Um, if you wanted to override it, you would implement genome web links. Um, this site didn't choose to do so. And um, theme links got passed two variables. One of them is an array of links. Here you can see there's one for increasing your font size, one for email, one for print, one for not sticky and promoted and so forth, okay? So all the data that got passed into this theme function is easily browsable here um, without having to do that print our trick. And one class that we needed in order to have it look right. Um, so that's what, the, uh, that's what this theme function got passed. Um, we can click into this block here. This is called in this issue. Um, can't uh, drag this around right now. Um, and this is implemented as a block um, in this issue is. So the template function is called block.tpl.php. Um, the actual file that was used was module system block.tpl.php. Um, so in fact, we never overrode um, this template. Um, but if we wanted to, it's telling us here's some, block, some file names you might want to use and you, you'd want to stick these into your theme, okay? Block dash gw dash in this issue dot tpl.php. That file would override just this block, okay? The next, the, the next um, <coughs> file name I might want to choose if I wanted to be less specific is block dash gw dot tpl.php. Um, that is a file you use if you want to override all blocks that are defined in the GW module, okay, which is my custom module for this site. Um, this is in a region called left top, and if I wanted to have all blocks um, use the same template file for this whole region, um, I would name it this. So uh, you have a real um, window into Drupal's suggestions feature um, where it, uh, where you can um, name files appropriately and they get used for only certain blocks and so forth. Um, so, uh, you know, you, without this module, you have to know a lot about Drupal theming in order to understand how to name your files, where to put them, what variables get passed. The point of this is that uh, you can let this do a lot of the work um, and you don't have to know, you don't have to be the expert about theme inheritance and so forth. Is there an example on this page of something that's been overrated? We can see what it looks like. Um, well, the last one we saw was a little bit overwritten. Um, this one is node.tpl.php. Is it's, so it's a theme node call. Um, the candidate files are node-news and node.tpl.php, and we are using node-news, which is a custom template file of ours. Okay. Okay. So um, it has been overwritten. Um, uh, yeah, because you may not consider it overridden, but I, I would consider it overridden. Okay. Um, because it's not using the plain node one. Um, Is that's a CCK field to show the hierarchy there? Where? What's a CCK field? Where are you looking? At? Well, in some place in that node, or some place where the, where you got a because that that seems to be probably like. You can catch it on the node level and do something, or you can catch it on the field level. So that changes how much stuff is available to, to see. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I could click click in here. This one isn't showing the individual fields in a node. 
uh, as far as I know. Oh yeah, that's one. Okay, so here I, I clicked on buy a genome web staff reporter. Genome web staff reporter is a field in our content type, okay? It is um, byline author, I think is basically what it's called. Um, and uh, the function that is emitting this is theme text formatter default, um, which we didn't override. It's just a text field. Its formatter is fine for us. It just prints it and um, runs check plane possibly. Um, but that function, it, were you to want to override it um, with something like genome web text former, formatter default, gets past um, this element array with the whole bunch of stuff in it. Um, this is CCK's theming array here, and you can choose to override, override how text, um, text fields are, are themed. Okay, um, I don't know the date. Is just part of regular node. The title, nothing special in here. Yeah, so there isn't much else to show you there. This related stories thing um, is using theme item list. Um, so it gets past a list of items, basically, all five of these links. And it gets past a title of related stories. So, the module list actually has a title parameter at the end, which hardly anyone ever uses, but we did here. Um, if we go and look at the page as a whole, is that the right thing to do now? Well, I, I can just tell you, this works for other parts of the page. Here's a menu link. Um, so this is the primary um, navigation on the site. Um, the thing that emits this blog image here is called theme menu item link. Um, it has not been overridden by us. Um, and if we wanted to, we would use this genome web menu item link. And that theme function gets passed an array here um, that's huge, that has to, you know, has to deal with the menu system. Um, I didn't talk about this top section here. But basically, there's a page hierarchy um, that you can walk up. So PHP, PHP template menu item is the theme function um, that's like the parent of theme menu item link, parent in the sense of the DOM um, document object model. Theme menu tree block.tpl.php. So we're actually inside of a block here. Um, which gets called by the theme function theme blocks um, and that gets called by the theme hook page okay so um, page.tpl.php we can click on that um, and uh, you can see that um, what got used um, for this theme call is not the standard page.tpl.php but in fact the one that's in my theme um, sites all themes genome web page.tpl.php um, I chose to um, use a function name that is um, the least specific here, page.tpl.php, but there are others. If I wanted all my node detail pages to use a different page.tpl.php, I would have named it page-node. And if I need a custom looking page for this particular story, I just name it this, okay? Um, so this is built-in Drupal suggestions feature where um, you can name your templates as specific as you want and they can only apply in certain cases, okay? Um, and um, that's when you need it, you need it. So it's real nice to know about that feature and it's nice for theme developer to remind you that it's there. All right, these are the pre-process functions on the site that are running for pages. Um, both my theme, genome web preprocess page, and a module called GW implement the preprocess hook, which may not be a good form um, for a site to implement the same thing two different ways, but it works. Um, and the standard template preprocess template page function is running for this theme call too. And the stuff that gets passed into page 
Um, everyone knows the variable called content. It's large and it has all the HTML that's in here. Um, but there's lots of other stuff that gets passed in, um, like is this person an admin? Is this the front page? And um, the currently active user and all of the different regions because those get printed in page.tpl.php. And um, lots of other interesting things about the style sheets and um, so forth. So here's the, the style section. Um, and here is the CSS array, um, all the different module CSS files are in here. So that's all the stuff you have at your disposal when put in page.tpl.php. Um, phew. Uh, so uh, that's theme developer. I, I just want to impress upon people that this is a tool that you have at your disposal. Um, it's part of the DVL module. Um, and uh, you know, particularly useful if you are just learning about Drupal 6 theming and how to name things and what variables you have, you might want to turn this on. Um, so uh, another caveat. Um, this thing's really cool. Um, the way it does what it does is fairly evil from a themer's perspective. Um, so we can look at the source of your page while this is Enabled. You guys see okay? Okay, so you get tons and tons and tons <coughs> of spans like this one. And you might get spans right next to each other, like this one. Um, the reason why we wrap everything in spans is in order to do this um, red highlighting as you hover around the page. Um, we need those there. We need to be able to identify in the DOM what, you know, what HTML belongs to what theme call. And so we emit this stuff. Um, and we know when you click on the breadcrumb that we have to show the information related to the breadcrumb in the window. Okay, so um, what I'm getting at is shut this off. When you, when you are done with it, shut it off immediately. <laughs> um, because it, it can easily wreck your JavaScript. It can easily wreck your CSS. The point of this is to enable, find out what you should call your file, find out what a variable it's getting passed, and then shut it off. And in fact, there's a block um, that Devel module offers with lots of handy links. And one of the handy links is enable theme development module. And when that is enabled, it says disable theme development module. So, just use that to quickly enable and disable. Um, but don't expect your site to work perfectly with this on. It's not that kind of module. It's the kind of module that, uh, you know, take what you need and then shut it off. Is there, a, is there an option in the admin menu to make it easy, if you've got an admin menu running, to turn it on and off there? Um, I think so. But I'm not positive, because I'm not too familiar with admin menu. Yeah, um, a, it'll it'll shut off all the developer type modules and then and then you can flip them on all back on again. Okay, so you, so you get a global. You don't get a specific for just. I don't theme think it's just the theme, right? I think it's kind of turn off all the development modules or turn them all back on again. Yeah, I mean maybe that would be a good thing to add since we already have a menu callback. Maybe it's not exposed um, as a regular link, so it doesn't know about it. I'm not sure. So turning them off is okay. So if you have to uninstall it, you just kind of flip yes. the switch. Yes, yeah, it doesn't do anything to your database, and you don't have ever have to uninstall it. Um, but you just disable it using um, using the link in the block is the way I usually do it. Um, you could also use the admin build modules page. You could also use Drush. I mean, there's a few different options. We, like just just a caveat: we were using it recently, and, and we weren't turning it off, and we suddenly discovered we were having problems on the server because it dumps a whole lot of stuff into Tim. Yeah, yeah. So it, it also does <laughs> it that. Felt tempo. Yeah, it, it also leaves a lot of files littered around, and I committed a patch like within a week that cleans those up. Um, if you're actually running cron on your site, which in the development, development we were, so yeah, we were, yeah. Um, so it tries to clean up after itself. Yeah. Work with lightbox. Um, it works with lightbox in the sense that uh, we will still give you all the theme information that you want and so forth. Um, could it break the light box effect? I, I don't know. Um, but if it does, I would say that's not a problem. Because the point of this is not to have it um, on while you're showing it to anyone who cares. 
it's for the femur, and you shut it off uh, quickly <laughs> when you're done with it. Um, and you shut it off quickly not because it's damaging, just because the other work you're trying to do of getting your site to look pretty, um, it's problematic with this module terminal. It looks like it might be kind of resource. Uh, I mean, a little bit, a little bit, um, in that sense, you probably don't want to have it running on a live site. Yeah, I mean, you need a certain permission in order to have it do its thing, so most people wouldn't even incur those penalties. Um, and it, it is a little bit resource intensive, it's a little better than it was when it first came out. Um, but it, it takes a lot of uh, memory to store all these theme calls and what they're doing and what variables were passed in each one. <coughs> Um, so, um, I knew that uh, this would be fairly brief, my mm -hmm. demo of um, Theme Developer a half hour. I just want to show you guys a little bit about what we're working on for Drupal 7 theming. Um, since I have little time here, if you're like, I can't possibly think about Drupal 7, then you're free to leave. Um, but uh, there's some really interesting things for themers and, and you can give your two cents about whether they're good ideas or not. Um, but uh, I, I guess I'll, I'm still happy to keep talking about theme developer for people who have questions or thoughts on it. Right here. Uh, you said that it, this is a, just a Pokemon rock, which at least in my word, is a theme or info or is this a separate? Um, theme or info sounds right. In th are you looking at the modules page? No, I'm looking at the thing at the bottom. No, I mean the check box. Oh yeah, the checkbox is called theme or info. Yes. Okay, you said you call it theme or disabled. Uh, there is a there is a block that's offered by the DVL module. Um, one of the links in the block is enable theme developer. This is confusing. Um, and disable theme developer, and that does a module disable or a module enable. In addition to once your mod, once this module is enabled, you also have to click this box in order to get that pop up to show up. Turning that off. Correct. Good point. Turning this off um, lets you like really click on things. Because when it's on, we assume that when you click on print, that didn't work. <laughs> um, we assume that you want to know about the print. Uh, of course, it's a printer friendly page. Um, I think it opens up. <coughs> When you click on other links, um, we assume that you want to know information about that menu link, not that you actually want to follow it. So if you want to actually follow a link, you have to disable it again. Lee. How did you get it to write a scan around everything? Um, now we're in module evil, land. Evil uh, hack. <laughs> um, there is a hook called theme registry alter. Yeah. Um, That's where I was going. And uh, so we implement that hook. And we actually say, so we get a shot at um, every theme call. And what we do there is we say, go through our function called theme instead of the one that Core provides. So we, we run everything through our theme, and we can time it. And we can see what variables get passed into it, and what suggestions are available for it, and what function was actually used. Um, so we reroute one of the core features of Drupal through this thing, um, which was fairly scary when I was first implementing it. But actually, it's been fine. And um, it's another reason why it's not appropriate for a production site. But uh, it, it works pretty well for this purpose. That, that's yeah. perfectly one of my question, because you showed theme menu. So one of the things I had to deal with with the site I just built was um, I added a module that implemented theme registry alter on the menu link because they wanted to do something with the menu. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to do something with the menu and I go into Zen and say, okay, Zen actually uses the menu link itself and I'm using a sub theme. So I go ahead and I go, okay, I can do the same thing. I make my changes and nothing happens. I go, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Let's go to Zen. Let's go modify Zen. Nothing happens. So can you talk about how theme registry alter basically overrides the ability for anything else, whatever grabs that function, owns that function, and it can't be changed after that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that's appropriate for this audience. Well, like, <laughs> does, it, does, it, does it display that, like, if, if I used a module that did theme register alter, would, would your display say, 
it was being called by a module because at that point you can no longer change it in the theme. Um, so I'm not sure that this thing doesn't display anything like that. There's a devel um, page called theme registry where you can browse the registry and you can see what's been altered. Um, so that might be an answer to your question. Yeah, like, I got I got bit by it, and then and then like a day later, somebody else was playing with the same thing, got bit by it, and it, it, the problem was it was like unless you know that this is an option that some module can grab your theme info, you sit there and you get frustrated because you go, well, this should be working. It, yeah, why I mean, can't I do it? You're right. It, well, it, it yes, this registry shows you that. Okay, so um, the theme registry uh, is something that most themers don't need to care about. Okay, so feel free to think about your kids or something. Um, but uh, this is the theme registry, and this is the array called node, okay? And the thing that we have altered in order to make this module work is down at the bottom here. The function, typically, um, the, func the theme function that gets called here, um, well, this is a bad example because it's, um, it is a template, but in any case, we took uh, the node call and made it into a function instead of a template. And the function that gets called is devel themer catch function. Okay, I can't show it here because I've zoomed up too, too high. Um, and if you look at any of these, like other theme, like you might have looked into uh, theme links. Um, that is a function. Well, uh, we took that one over too. <laughs> devel themer catch function. We took them all over. So every theme call goes to catch function. Um, and what catch function does is it logs what everything's happening and sends it on its way to where it was going before. Okay? So um, that's the deal with registry alter is that you can change things to call through you or particular calls to send them whichever way you want. Um, other uh, thoughts on theme developer? Cool. All right, so let's look at Drupal 7. Um, okay, I want to start uh, just by looking at a node, okay? So this is my development site for Drupal 7. Um, and here we have our node detail page. This is node 4. Um, we're just here in the Garland theme, nothing special. Um, we can see that uh, we have a body field like Drupal wants to have. We have a city field, which you can think of as a CCK field, except fields are in core Drupal now. So this is a core Drupal field. Um, you know, now showing for the first time a, uh, a core field. And the value of this field is Cambridge. And there's a bunch of comments that have been um, attached and are showing on this no detail page. So um, there is a new hook um, in Drupal and a new way of page building. Um, and I just want to show you that. Um, the devel module has a feature where we will show you the page array. Okay, so the page array is nothing is something new. Um, you guys who, who have done some um, module work will recognize that um, when you build up nodes, um, you have something called node content, and that's an array of bits that have been attached to the node, um, and they're part of the rendering of the node. Um, well, the whole page is like that now. Okay, so um, let's just go to the home page. Let's go for it, okay? So this page array describes the whole page and it describes the whole page before it gets themed. So each of the regions of the page has a section here. There's a section, there's an array for left, an array for content, and an array for footer. If I had a right sidebar, there would be a right. If I had a left top, there would be a left top, okay? Um, inside of these sections, here we'll open up left, each of the blocks inside this region is an array, okay? And each of the blocks goes further. Um, this is the development block right here. Um, there's an element called content inside of it. 
And there's two elements in here called DVEL links and DVEL form. Those correspond to this set of links and a form which, oh, it's this one. It's the switch user um, part of the lock. Okay? Um, so um, let's look at another section, content. So that's the main content window. Um, inside of content, there's a block called system main. Uh, another bit about Drupal 7 is that the main part of your page is now a block, okay? Just like any of the other blocks, right? Um, and it's called system main. You can put it inside of any region you want to. Um, by default, it's in this content region. Um, the contents of system main are an array of nodes and a pager. So if we look at the actual content of the page, we have a bunch of nodes here. And we wouldn't have a pager except I don't have enough nodes here to warrant a pager. Okay? And this pager section here um, has no markup in it, so that's why you're not seeing anything. Nodes, here is all four nodes on my site. Um, you can open that up, and body is its own element, field city. So um, field city has all the usual you know, fields here for a field like you're used to with CCK. Body field is basically also a CCK type field in Drupal 6 now, or 7, um, and links. So what, what's the point of all this? Um, the page is now a nice array. There's a new hook called hook page alter. You can do whatever you want there. You can change any block, any node within the content area, any header, footer thing, make it what you want. So this is kind of the hook to end all hooks. Um, before theming starts, you can just change whatever you want here. Um, so I think this is one hook that's worthwhile for the theming community to know and use. Um, so the page for, is aware of all the content? Correct. It's an array of everything. And then if you want, like, if you want a block to appear in two different regions, that's impossible with the Drupal block interface. But it's trivial with this hook to just copy the block to another spot where you want it. Or if, you, if on a certain page, or if you're viewing sports stories, and you know you're on sports stories, and you know that this block needs to be over here for just those kinds of stories, you can just move it to whatever region it belongs in. So a lot of the things that were hard are a lot easier with this book. Um, can you move stuff from one content block element to another content? Yeah, I mean everything's a structured array, so you can just grab the related stories part of the node and move it over to the right region if you want to. I mean anything like that is pretty straightforward now. Yeah. What is this hook again? Hook page alter. Whose idea was this? I submitted the patch. <laughs> yeah. Ajay? Can you still move the comments? Because there was a still a problem moving comments around. Yeah, so um, the comments are, are, well, comments don't appear on the home page. They appear on um, detail pages, right? Yeah. So if we look at a detail page, uh, a detail page, like any other, has left and content and footer. If we go inside content and the system main block and the content of the system main block, there's an array called nodes. We're only showing one node in here. But um, the contents of the four node, there's the body field, the field city, the node links, the comments. So yeah, you can just dive down into comments and move them to left or move them above the body or wherever you like. Um, so yeah, the comments is, the whole block of comments is something you can move. You cannot yet um, move e individual comments. That might be nice too, because you can do that for nodes. But uh, the comment module is a spaghetti mess, and I can't really fix it, basically. So um, hopefully someone will. But right now, your whole set of comments, you have access to them as a chunk of HTML. It's usually good enough. So your, your point earlier that 
the main section is a block also. So everything's a block. Yeah. So I assume you've seen uh, <coughs> uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there, there's some like moving blocks. Especially as April Fool's down. Hmm? He did an April Fool's thing with Buster. That was funny. Well, yeah, but I don't think this is April Fool's. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, so basically there, they were moving blocks around. <coughs> yeah. And I'm just trying to figure out how this interfaces with panels. I mean, it seems like what they were doing with blocks <coughs> in D7, there's a bunch of gold on D7, from what I understand. How that's going to interface with what uh, Merlin is doing with panels. Yeah. It's well, so the hook page alter is a tool for the theme developer and module developer and site builder to customize things that they need to do, especially if they need to do it only once in a while. It's like a really convenient place to make changes. Um, if you're using panels and it works for you as far as block placement and block placement on certain pages, then you don't need that hook. You can basically ignore it. I think that there, there are simply different approaches. Um, but you might get your panels set up the way you want and someone will come to you and say, yeah, but I need to do this once in a while. You might then keep your panels the way they are and just use this phone to move things around. So, so. does the node object, does the page object have the rendered fields as well as the raw fields available? Or is this, it's basically getting the, the pre-formatted stuff, it just hasn't dropped it in. In other words, so like, like for instance, where you have a choice of uh, you know, filtering text. Is it got all the variations that are available or just the one that's supposed to appear? Right. Um, I didn't talk about that. No theming has happened. Not no theming, but this is before theme page has been called, before the page is rendered. So this is unrendered stuff, so it's all raw. Um, you move it into where you want it, but leave it as an array, and then it will get rendered. Okay, so you don't have to worry about security issues. You don't. You don't have to. Oh wait, I use the raw version here. That's there's no. Yeah, that's later on. This is all raw, and you just move it, and it will happen. So, um, just so you can see what's happening, um, where would be a good place to show that? Um, now, is this available for D seven now? Yes. Yeah, it's been committed already. Um, you probably don't want to start building sites on D7, but the fact well, is this... We have something that we're not going to be releasing for a long time. Uh, this would make a lot of sense. Optimism. It is. It's great. It's great. Um, but <laughs> you don't have views yet for Deep Drupal 7, um, nor hundreds of other modules you might want to use. So um, you might get stuck with that problem. But as far as core goes, it's ready for site building. I mean, we have 11... 11,000 assertions in the in the unit test suite right now. So, I mean, I think it's quite, <laughs> it's quite non bug Will you take the pledge that it'll be ready for Drupal 7? <laughs> um, yes, I want to do pledges. Um, but this is, <laughs> this is in Drupal core, so it's in already. Um, some of these things have a pound theme on them. Here's an example. Um, um, yeah, okay, so this is a little bit hard to see. Um, but I think you answer your question. It has not been it has not been rendered, so I mean that's a good thing. You have very structured data, you don't have HTML that you're dealing with. Uh, for someone who's new to this, how does it compare to pre processed functions as far as like where does it fit in? Um, a preprocess function is how you fiddle with a single theme call. So if you want to fiddle with the node theme call or uh, the menu link, you can make changes there. And I think that that's going to be useful forever. Right. Um, but, uh, but page alter is more of a global scope thing of I need something is currently in this region of the page and I need to move it to the other one. Or, um, you know, there are too many links in this particular theme links. Um, I need to unset one of them. Is there an ordering issue, like when things are happening as far as? Like, yeah, I mean, they, yeah, you have to, it, it helps to be aware of Drupal's page building process. Um, in, 
in general, hook page alter is before any theming happens, okay. and preprocess is during a theme call. So this would theoretically be before, or maybe really be before all the preprocess functions work? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I can show you guys code, hopefully you won't run away. <laughs> um, about the difference between Drupal 6 and Drupal 7's page rendering process. This is index, index.php, the sort of, uh, this runs, every, every Drupal call runs through this file. The backbone. Um, it is a backbone, it's a small backbone. Um, here's where we build the page, um, menu execute active handler, um, and here's where we print theme page, okay? This is Drupal 6, all right? Um, so when you're done here, when you've executed this and you're running through here, the page is fully themed and um, all that hasn't happened is the page wrapper. Everything else has happened, all the nodes are rendered, all the links are rendered, everything. Okay, and we get down here and we do the page wrapper and we pass that to it. And that's all there is to index.php. So index.php in Drupal 7, again, we build up the, the content of the main body. Um, but um, it hasn't been themed in there yet. It's still an array that's appropriate for Drupal render. And down here, instead of calling theme page, we call something called Drupal render page. And if we were to look at Drupal render page, you know, blah, 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 Drupal alter page. So that is the hook I'm talking about, hook page alter. Um, you get a shot at changing everything about the page, and then we use a function that is familiar, at least to module developers, called Drupal Render. And that's gonna take the page array and recurse through it and theme everything. Okay, so no theming has happened um, when you have Drupal Alter, a shot at Drupal Alter here. Um, in practice, some theming might have happened because our pages aren't perfectly converted to this model of return structured arrays instead of strings, but um, a lot of the important stuff is is available to you unrendered, and you can just change. You know, the other thing is if you don't like the theme function that um, a certain radio button is going to call, it like you can't use the default one. You can just on that page change its pound theme to call a different function, and it will get called. So. Um, this works for forms, this works for admin pages. Um, you can change quite a bit about the page here. So other, any other thoughts on this? Is this going to make testing easier? And that because you can basically get to it before anything happens, you can say, run your test there and make sure that you don't have to worry about interpreting HTML again, it's raw data, so you yeah. can say, this function should have done this and structured it this way. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, that's 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 interesting for like um, if you want theming, you want testing of your own site, you might want to do testing at that level. The simple test stuff that Drupal Core does all runs with Garland theme, sort of out of the box. So we don't usually do testing at this layer. It's fully themed um, because we just, we know what's supposed to happen there. Um, Okay, so that's one interesting thing. I can do one more Drupal 7 thing because I'm excited about it. Um, so here we have node.tpl.php. Um, so this is a, what I'm going to show you now is not committed yet. It is a patch for Drupal 7. So it may or may not get in, but I'm feeling pretty optimistic about it. Um, let's start over here. Um, my, uh, sorry. So you guys are probably familiar with node.tpl.php. Its most central thing it does is print the variable called content. Okay, well, we have changed, we propose to change how that works. So instead of print, you call a function mm -hmm. called render right here. Okay, 
And so content is something different in this template than what it was in Drupal 6. It is still a array that um, has not been themed yet. Okay? Um, it's, it is um, still in its Drupal render structure. And so you say, I just want to render it here. And you render it. And um, the reason why this is really useful is you have a problem in Drupal 6 and prior versions where once you start grabbing different fields and different bits of the node, you are no longer using the content variable. So if you start adding new modules to your site, they don't have any effect because nothing's printing out those bits into the node. Um, so what we are doing here is fixing that problem so that if you add new modules, they'll still work. Um, we created three new functions, two of which are visible in this template called render, hide, and show. Okay, so render, um, render content means go ahead and get all of the content and um, print it right here. Um, but we called hide right before it. And we called hide on the comments part of content and we call hide on the links. So that when this render calls, it won't print those out because it thinks they're already printed, essentially how it works on the back end. Okay? But then we can render them later. Okay? And we can render this here. So this, this looks really odd when you first look at it. And you're like, no, I like the old way. What I think is you just want to print out variables in your template files. You don't want to have to deal with these functions. But um, these functions actually let you um, have your site be very malleable and you can install new contrib modules and they all will still work. Plus you can put fields where you want inside of the node rendering. And so these three functions will be available to you in any template. So if you wanted to say grab some other field out of the content, you could do it earlier and once you've done it, that render content, it says that's already been done and it just leaves it out. Correct. That there's an example of that here. <clears throat> Um, the Garland template wants to put its taxonomy terms before the body and this, that stuff. So we just render it first. Render content links terms. Okay? So it'll lay out the taxonomy terms up there. And when we call render content here, it will render everything else except for the stuff that was explicitly hidden. And then we can just lay those down where they're supposed to be. What was the third function? Render, hide, and show. Um, show, you don't actually have to use very often because render implies show, so maybe we should only think about two of them. Um, so that makes the last, so that makes that page look a, you know, a little different, I guess, but you could still do that one level up, right? Like pre-process, it's the have a simple variable. Yeah. Would yeah, I mean, still work at that level, or is that designed just for the the node or the page level? Um, everything that you could do at preprocess, you can still do. Um, well, I mean, could you do this at the preprocess level? Do these functions yeah. work there? Too? Yeah, you can do a lot. You can do sort of the equivalent stuff. Yes. Um, the only problem is that you're hard coding your template in a sense, so that it works with the modules that you have now and the bits of data you have now, but if you add something called related links module that wants to put a section at the bottom of your node, um, you're no longer printing the variable content, so you're just not going to get it. You've built it all up, and it's there, but it gets dropped at the very end because it's not being printed. So that's what we fix here. Is there an equivalent to like, I know for like, for the form API, you can render pieces of the form and then there's just a Go render, go render the rest of it. Whatever we did, whatever's left over, is there like a render? The, it, it is these functions. It's the same thing. This render is an alias for Drupal render. It's the same function. Uh, it's just a friendlier thing to use in template files. But yeah, it works for forms because they all go through Drupal render. Wait. Where would you put, would you use show Specify a specific page if you wanted one page to have a different order of things? Yeah, you would do it in a custom module. Okay. 
But could, could you do it in the template.php and do it at that level? I think you so. Do, I think so. If you just called it like node page alter, it would just work. You know, you can call it the name of any. Can can you put regular hooks inside your theme? Yeah. In fact, we were talking about that earlier because we were talking about okay. doing a form a form alter, and I said, oh, you need a custom module and then reroute it. And somebody said, no, you don't need to do that. Just go ahead and call it theme name form alter, and it works. There you go. So you can just put in template. In template HP. HP. So you don't even have to write a module. If you yeah. if you know there are certain things your theme needs to do, you can just use those functions. Yeah. At least right now you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think we change anything like that. So that should work. Could there be client side performance implication because of that? Because you are sending the content first and then sending the rendering the common data, so if there is extra heat to the back and forth, or this still be the same as they all went through? The, the final HTML is the same as what you're used to with, with Drupal 6, and it's just a different order of rendering. And rendering is happening as late as possible here. And by rendering, I really mean theming. Keep it as code. Keep it as code as long as possible, so that you get a chance to manipulate it without having to do regular expressions to parse out your HTML and fix something that was done wrong. Right. right. Precisely. Yeah. That's a little. Say you have the 